There are three conclusively proven benefits from cannabis, okay? Treatment of chronic pain, treatment nausea. of chemotherapy-induced nausea. Again, this is something the medical community said this is concretely it works. He called nicotine the most reliable cognitive enhancer that we currently have. Question of the day before we get into this. Uh, do, you, do you smoke cigars at all? And how many of you out there uh, partake in the... Uh the, the wacky tobacco. There you go. The marijuana. So this is, I wanted to talk, I really, I want, and I want to hear if your opinions have changed in this. I wanted to yeah. talk, there isn't really a whole lot of balanced or, I guess to use the word, nuanced discussion of, of, of marijuana out there. Yeah. For that matter, tobacco. You get people who are radical on either side. As a matter of fact, I think the super pro marijuana lobby now, um, they have a lot of good arguments, but they're yeah. so, they sort of near the anti-tobacco lobby where they've really overshot their target. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is a quick segment to hopefully maybe present a balanced view of the benefits, and they are real for both, and drawbacks yeah. of both marijuana and tobacco, and really more so kind of their, their active chemicals. Um, first thing I want to say is they're very important in a, in a similar, uh, they're very similar, sorry, in an important way, rather, in that most of the research related to uh, both marijuana and, or cannabis. I know people are like, don't say marijuana. <laughs> yeah. That was a DEA term. Yeah. Cannabis oh, uh, and uh, tobacco. <laughs> man. Most of the research is not It's preclinical at best. And that's because we haven't been able to study either of them very well. So with marijuana, True. that's because it's a Schedule One drug, which I absolutely am against. I think most people who even think that marijuana is bad for you, of course, should still we still should be allowed to have some kind of medical research. Yeah. And then nicotine hasn't been studied a whole lot because it's been the face of one of the greatest public health scourges and <laughs> subsequent crusades yeah. the last century, really. So you don't have a, a ton so I want to make sure that I'm very clear. The research there is scarce. But let's it's go to the benefits. A little limited. Little limited. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the benefits of, of marijuana first. Um, it, th there are some scientifically proven uses yeah. for marijuana. Okay, I want to be really clear. There was a 2017 meta-analysis of over 10,000 studies, I think. Oh, wow. And they essentially found that there are three conclusively proven benefits from cannabis. Okay, treatment of chronic pain. In adults, and I want to be really clear, like, this is chronic neuro, uh, what they call neuropathic pain. Yeah, so people are like, I had a tooth removed and I decided to smoke a joint instead of take the pain. That doesn't well, work at all. No. Okay? It's the kind of You're just going pain. to be in a lot of pain <laughs> yeah. and paranoid about the dentist's tools. <laughs> yeah. you forget about it's it. It's the sciatic you don't think nerve about pain. It'll help something pain, like that. Things like right? fibromyalgia. Yeah. Um, fibromyalgia. Treatment of chemotherapy induced nausea. Again, this is something the medical community doesn't said this cancer. is concretely it works. Wait, what? And then uh, treating <laughs> symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Yeah. Then there are some maybe other therapeutic effects like uh, improving sleep. Sleep. Um, you can look up all yeah. of these studies on, on, on PubMed. I think it's important to be honest about the benefits, yeah, of course. as well as the drawbacks, because some people tell you that it cures everything. Something else that's really important for people to know, like people say, why are you putting glaucoma on there? Here's the thing. You can have marijuana help with a condition, right? but yeah. it may not be super effective, and it's significantly less effective with more side effects than other right. drugs available. Yeah. Sometimes I know the guy was going to say Big Pharma. No, no, I don't work for Big Pharma. Okay, this isn't paid for by the Koch brothers or Pfizer. Yes, you do. Like glaucoma, they have better drugs that last longer and yeah. are more effective. And so at that point, you say, okay, just like anything else, just like other conditions, we have a more effective drug for that. Exactly, but, but it doesn't mean it marijuana be, doesn't help. No, and it right. may be yeah. one of the most effective drugs currently available for neuropathic, for chronic neuropathic pain mm -hmm. and those conditions that we talked about. So. Uh, something else, a lot of people are going to be surprised when I say benefits of tobacco or its active yeah. constituent here, nicotine. Um, controversial, I know. Uh, nicotine, when separated, by the way, from the dangerous habit of, of cigarettes, specifically yeah. inhaled tobacco, not the boogeyman it's made out to be. And I know you're going to no. say, well, I'm just trying to justify this habit. All right, in order of safety, <laughs> it goes it goes uh, cigarettes and then like cigarette, and then probably chew yeah. and snuff. What is it, the, the Swedes? Snus in the nose? Snooze. I don't know. And then it goes <laughs> you down. Put that in the nose? Then it goes probably cigars and pipes because you're not, and then it would go to like vaporized nicotine, pure nicotine yeah. or nicotine uh, gum. Nicotine yeah. by itself actually eliminated from tobacco when they did studies on it was almost impossible for them to get the mice addicted to nicotine by itself really? like, without the other active oh, the additives in tobacco. Okay. Again, these are my studies, so like, I'm getting off on in, in a, the, a the field mouse yeah. weeds. <laughs> field mouse weeds. Fievel goes to it's science it's camp. The field, yes. <laughs> it's the, the, the field owl weeds. Fievel gets <laughs> stoned. Um, <laughs> so a recent evidence, but it'd probably be better than Fievel goes west. That sequel really mm -hmm. sucked. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah. is. It wasn't too <laughs> hey, You yeah. should go east. You seem like you've been holding on to that. Oh, yeah. Any other direction than Fievel goes west. Uh, <laughs> all right. He was pissed uh, off. By the way, a recent FDA study found that smokers of, of one to two cigars per day, the increased risk of cancer is statistically nearly insignificant in a 19... By the way, also so, um, That's good. No increased mortality rate. Just want to be clear huh. about that. And there are some studies where pipe smokers lived longer. So, Bill, there good you on go. you. You're <laughs> smaller, Asian, and you smoke a pipe, so you're, you're going to live till 105. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> By the way, there are a lot of neuroprotective elements to nicotine that have been proven. Uh, studies have shown that it's actually inversely correlated with neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinson's disease. Yeah. 
Okay, they're even studying nicotine right now as an adjunct therapy, and this is this is pretty controversial. Uh, it's not a secret, by the way, to anyone who's used it. Nicotine, of course, helps with visual attention, working memory, even prospective memory, which means prospective memory as opposed to working memory means kind of the ability to sort of make plans, then remember them and follow through. Uh, Pot does not help you with that. No, Pot does not, does not necessarily. Well, some people will be like, man, you just, opposite, need a, you just need a good sativa. For what? For what? <laughs> uh, what? There, was, there was one. Yeah, I'm real hungry, that movie bro. line. There was one. Uh, there ain't no draft no more. There Steve, was what one. you're saying here about the nicotine? Again, to be clear, you're not saying cigarettes. Correct. Saying no, of course not. Cigarettes. No, cigarettes suck. Nicotine. I'm not even saying necessarily cigars. Do people still cigars. smoke cigarettes in 2019? People do, yeah, man. Oh my god. And we'll get to that in a I've second, though, because of San Francisco banning all the vapes, and so people now are just going to be smoking cigarettes more. But as yeah. a matter, of, it is such a, so well known, noted psychologist. It's actually been cited quite a bit. I want to make sure I have her name right here. Jennifer Rusted, Rusted, I don't know. She's from uh, the University Rusted. of Sussex in Britain. She called nicotine the most reliable cognitive enhancer that we currently have. Oh, wow. wow. That's a doctor, not myself. There you go. There's an appeal to authority fallacy because I like my cigars. Uh, hit the notification bell. Join Mug Club at loudofcutter.com. Nice. Mug Club, if you have not already, it's the only way to continue with this show on YouTube. Right. And of course, subscribe on iTunes. Yeah. Leave a rating. So let's cigars. get to the drawback so that everyone now in the comments actually people are like, oh, I think Steven's being really uh, balanced here. I'm going to say, both of oh. them have drawbacks. Sh what happened? <laughs> exactly. And this should be something like you want someone like me on your side. Okay? You want people like the people in this room A who aren't really person. pro potheads, do yeah. not necessarily partake, saying, okay, maybe there's something here. We want to see some more research. I certainly right. don't want people going to, to jail for nonviolent drug related crimes. Let's get to some of the drawbacks with, with cannabis. Some people get mad that I even say marijuana. Um, one is pretty undeniable, okay? <laughs> marijuana is harmful to the developing brain, meaning it can yeah. cause permanent yep. deficits. Uh, people who use it before the age of 25. Same reason you can't uh, rent a car without paying a fee until you're 25. Right. The other here is more controversial. These are the two proven clinics clinically proven drawbacks of cannabis. Um, there seems to be pretty solid consensus among scientists and psychologists that, met, that marijuana exacerbates psychiatric conditions, or at the yes. very least can act as a trigger to those who are already predisposed to mm. them. Yes. Okay? Want to be clear. Drawbacks, tobacco. Similarly, smoking tobacco products, by the way, can cause cancer, obviously. Yeah. Again, this is mainly in relation to cigarettes. Also, when inhaled, cigarettes clearly extremely addictive. Yeah. Again, though, the rats couldn't get addicted to nicotine by itself. And I say this as yeah. someone who partakes, and all of us here either occasionally smoke cigars or pipes. It's because you force me to. I don't smoke them every day, and if I, if, if, you know, if I don't feel like it, I don't feel like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've never once been like, oh, I'm nicking for a cigar. Well, and everybody just, they, they kind of conflate nicotine with cigarettes. Every time they hear nicotine, they think cigarettes, and they right. think all the additives yeah. and all the bad stuff that is in cigarettes that it's is obvious true that's been proven. Right? And that's why it's hard to study. Right, exactly. I mean, the other right. part of that is, is, is I know what people are going to say, because whenever you want to get into the science of this, folks are going to go, but so, so what you're saying is that cigars are not dangerous. They have no increased risk. Well, there's a difference between a certain small degree of risk, right, which right. is certainly there is more risk of getting cancer from tobacco products if you're using them than if you're I not. I mean, cheeseburgers. But exactly. Yeah, I mean, kill all you. kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. But there's a big difference between cigarettes and Michael cigars Moore and pipes. Films. Yes, I mean, they can kill you, oh, too. Oh, God. Those well, are but here's a whole the thing different too. category. Th think about this. The, the positive effects, the relaxing effects, uh, reduced stress that you can have from smoking a uh, cigar, or not, not a ton of cigars, yeah. but a little bit, right? That's that what I suspected with pipe smokers. And that was a meta-analysis, yeah. and even though when they isolated it for the cancer, I don't think we have these overlays. I think with the pipe smokers, they said there was like an increase of 2 to 4% chance of like a soft cancer, yeah. mm -hmm. um, less of an increased chance from non-coffee drinkers to coffee drinkers, and they attribute that to actually drinking hot beverages. This is something a lot huh. of people don't know. Yerba huh. mate is like a popular drink now. Yeah. They found very high in antioxidants, but those people would have all kinds of esophageal and mouth cancer. And the really? reason why, though, they drink it boiling hot out of a gourd, often with a metal straw. <laughs> well, like, well, yeah, it's like sitting on a, putting your mouth out on a sundial. <laughs> <laughs> the heat, the heat itself is good. what's all, is screwing up all the cells in there. I mean, yeah. not again that there isn't some perhaps increased risk with some, certain types of. We're not saying you can't eat soup. Yes. Yeah, Just but we, it should be lukewarm. A little bit. A little, little warm. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, sweet and sour, anytime. Yeah. Delicious. Egg drop, wonderful. And, and I want to be clear about the pro pot <laughs> lobby, the anti-debacle right? anti right, well, lobby. They've gone way over the line. They've yeah. so wrapped, just like kind of the pro pot people like we were talking about, so far over the line that they now even try to downplay safer alternatives like vaping. They don't have that problem in Europe. They recognize vaping, isolated nicotine, is far safer than smoking cigarettes. Right. But in San Francisco, you can't even have Nick e juices shipped or jewel yeah. products shipped to right. your house. But from what I understand, they still sell cigarettes in the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? Like, ah, gosh, I really, I can't use what I use to quit cigarettes. Yeah. 
Very <laughs> better confused. go back to cigarettes. cigarettes. Yeah, exactly. With all the problems that San Francisco has, I'm I'm surprised they're focusing yeah. on this one. If you could just get people not to defecate in the street and live yeah, yeah. Right. in tents mm-hmm. around every single corner, that would be a good idea. By the way, that also brings us to some of the Focus big uh, money resources. shadow figures. A lot of people don't know this. The the, the the pro marijuana lobby. They have a lot of big billionaire backers too. People say, "Oh, you're paid by big pharma." Well, George Soros has uh, fronted a lot of organizations that push the cannabis. And something else that push the cannabis. That sounds like a, I'm out of touch there. <laughs> Anyone who pushes yeah. something is a panacea pushes for the old weed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is something crazy to do. A lot of people don't understand. Look into the relationships between big marijuana and Canada because they all have to kind of go through Canada right now since it's gotten yeah. the green light from, you know, from, from the government there. Yeah. Um, big corporations, I don't know if it's InBev or Anheuser Bush, they're now looking in cannabis, into cannabis drinks. When people say, oh, big pharma, big, you're paid by big pharma. If you have any opinion other than cannabis works for everything, yeah. well, what about the big corporations who are, who are uh, selling your marijuana and now that yeah. it's legal? You hate big corporations as a general rule, but all of a sudden they toss a little bit of THC isolate into your soda. (laughs) They're inherently altruistic. (laughs) Exactly. Those are the cool guys, man. And there's gigantic corporations betting huge on this right now. So this is not like a small mom and pop field growing pot. Yes, and that is going to be something very interesting because just like uh, with alcohol, with uh, marijuana, the the bulk of, of purchases come from people who chronically consume. It doesn't right, tend yeah. to involve people who occasionally consume. So if they're yeah. making these marijuana-infused you know, like beverages, things like that, that are going to be released in Canada and, of course, places, states where it's legal, well, do they have to create a drink to sell to the people who already partake in marijuana regularly, in which case it has to be a much higher dose, or do yeah. they want to reach new users? Do they want to create yeah. a new mm-hmm. market share? Which, of course, tobacco companies were vilified for doing, in yeah. which case yeah. so they would have to sell a product that really doesn't cater to their base. So it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out. And I want to know what everyone else out there thinks. Uh, has your mind changed yeah. at all on, on medical marijuana, recreational marijuana? And what's your opinion? Who do you think is, who do you think is more powerful, the tobacco lobby? We've been told of the boogeyman or the anti-tobacco lobby. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe or hit the notification bell. I think you see some videos playing in boxes up above, but you may or may not know we've been demonetized on YouTube. So you can actually support this channel by joining Mug Club, loudwithcredit.com slash mug club. Uh, you get this wonderful hand-etched mug along with hours of content every week, the full daily show that you don't get here on YouTube. Also, if you want to see, see this with the hint, if you want to see Nip, that can't be on YouTube. You got to join Mug Club. Nips for Bug Club.